Hey guys, Lumi News here, and today I will be playing more Doki Doki Literature Club. I just want to thank you guys so much. I got so much positive reception on the last video. It was really, really nice to see. It's always kind of scary to try something different, and this is the first time I've ever done something that's not Danganronpa related, so I wasn't really 100% sure, I guess, how um, into it people would be or not. I had a lot of people say they were interested in me playing this back when I was doing V3 too, but that was kind of a while ago, so I wasn't 100% sure. I guess uh, how interested people would be in this but I got a lot of positive feedback and you guys were really good with the comment section um, I don't really think there is a whole lot of problems with spoilers there was only like one person I had to ban and honestly I feel like that's really good considering all the warnings I got about um, how bad people are with spoilers with this game so I was really really pleasantly surprised that so many of you guys you know didn't post spoilers or said nobody spoil weeby <laughs> so I really I really appreciate that. Also, most of you guys seem pretty uh, okay with me keeping my name the same way that it is, even though, I, like, I guess Weeby is kind of like a gender neutral name. <laughs> I guess it's just how I go online, so I kind of assume it's more feminine, even though it's really not like a name in general. Also, some of you guys were saying that, um, like, Weeby, you said you don't play visual novels, but Danganronpa is a visual novel. I've actually technically heard that Danganronpa is considered like an adventure game with visual novel aspects to it or something along those lines. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's at least uh, how Kadaka describes it. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and get back into the game. Okay, a uh, hint, you can use the skip button to fast forward through your three texts you've already read. Okay, cool. Um, some of you guys were saying to uh, Monica kind of implied this as well, but basically if you want to <laughs> hook up with Yuri, then you got to use, I guess, like more descriptive words or like intricate words. Then if you want to hook up with Natsuki, you get cutesy stuff. Then with Sayori, it's kind of more like basic words to kind of describe different concepts. I'm still not really sure how like the endings or whatever work with this. If you get an ending based off of each girl or um, something along those lines, that's what I would assume because that's how all other visual novels are. But like I said, I know this is supposed to get kind of like fucked up at some point, so <laughs> I don't know um, how that would work. I, I guess each ending, one of them kills you differently. I don't know. Um, but I think for this time, I want to hang out with Sayori because I think it would be more fun to hang out with a different girl um, each time, as much as I can at least. I don't want to just hang out with the same person every time. And Sayori is really cute. Some of you guys were saying that she really is kind of like the Kaide Chiaki type of character. Just like super sweet. She definitely has some some best girl vibes. <laughs> Although I do like Yuri too. She does kind of remind me of like Kirigiri. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'll do, I'll do that. Yay. So far so good. I think Tears was her. Let's see. Bed. Okay, cool. Dance. <laughs> Anime. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Hope. <laughs> I see like Kamida pop out from the, <laughs> the side of the corner. Did somebody say hope? So far, so good. <laughs> Lust. <laughs> what anime protagonist is experiencing joining this literature club? I love how unapologetic he is <laughs> about it though. <laughs> he doesn't even try to give a shit about literature. He's just like, yeah, whatever, Sayori. I'm here to get, I'm here to get laid. That's pretty much it. Okay, I think I did pretty good. Another day passes by and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Weeby. Yo, Sayori. <laughs> Got my cool guy act on today. Was poppin'? Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyways. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? <laughs> no thanks. Why well, see, he's just kind of a jerk sometimes. Ah, uh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh... Oh. <laughs> she was just gonna try to trick me into buying her something, I guess? Why that, all of a sudden? <laughs> no reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. 
Ah! Uh... Siori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> Trying to use your anime girl charm to get me to buy you shit. I see how it's going. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. <laughs> Why is it getting so detective on this? It's starting to feel like I'm playing a trial for a little bit. About to sorry watch a gallo you. Ooh ah. I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Uh oh. <laughs> uh I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Weeby to let me borrow some money. <laughs> That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh... Uh... Did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh... <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. <laughs> Don't be a smartass. That! Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Oh god. <laughs> you know, honestly, the game has been so cute so far, I've forgotten that it's fucked up until there's like lines like that that I'm like, oh god, is this gonna- is this like foreshadowing something? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Siori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But- She's a little Kokichioma, I'm telling you guys. You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So we had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Kia! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. I thought, oh my god, I thought here or Yuri just like smacked her. I was like, what the fuck? Don't smack her, she's so sweet. Oh, for now at least. What was... Uh... A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Er, retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Haha. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I'm so happy! Suri hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it! Suri rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! <laughs> it's cute. She is really cute so far. Oof! Suri suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! Hahaha. <laughs> There was actually arsenic in that cookie. I <laughs> got him. You're gonna go through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? And jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> Siori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. 
Cookie's still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Ah! Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? What the fuck? <laughs> All according to Kaikaku! Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Uh. Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica, anyways? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Uh. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular, after all. Uh, you don't think she is on a date? She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Although, sometimes, I guess it's um maybe because it's such a cliche in these types of games for all the girls to like randomly be in love with the protagonist. But some of me wonders, it was like, is there any other guys in this school? Like, <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri seem to be like in love with me almost immediately, even though I literally just showed up like, yeah, I don't give a shit about literature. <laughs> Sayori dragged me here. I really do feel like if this was a real club, it would be swamped with guys. But you know, anime logic. I guess it works with the reverse too with like free. It's like all these attractive guys in a swim club, yet there's nobody else that wants to join. How strange is that? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined, damn. Uh, way to drag yourself. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Oh yeah, some of you guys pointed out that Monica looks so much like Chisa from Tongue and Rampant 3. I don't know why I didn't think of that. I think she even like uh, in her high school photos or whatever had like the same bow and stuff too. That's crazy. They really do look a lot alike. <laughs> I really don't know why I didn't notice that. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Uh... Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Uh, boyfriend? What on earth are you guys talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. Is she already in love with me too? What held you up anyway? Um, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Weeby. I'm in love with you too, randomly. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose to leave out Siori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyways. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Siori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. In the closet? Why is she hiding in the closet? Oh, there's a little chair there too! <laughs> I'm too soon dairy to hang out with any of you. <laughs> Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. How the hell am I supposed to get a waifu if none of them will even talk to me? I slumped down into the nearest desk. 
How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me. But I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. Uh, I knew it. I had a feeling it was gonna be the school festival. I feel like that's another super big cliche with any kind of like slice of life anime thing, too. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. Maybe it's that like everyone is always so mean to them for liking literature. They're like, we're gonna show those motherfuckers who's boss at the festival and kill everyone. That'll really show them how great literature really is. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Huh. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Oh, uh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever. Nobody will come in the first place, even if it's a literature event. Everyone fucking hates us. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the things to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Siori is talking. Siori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh? That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? <laughs> Free food always does the trick. Uh, what kind? Oh, uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! Oh. <laughs> good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, uh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're always hungry. Anyways, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayori can put her mind to things that make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Uh, ooh, ah. <laughs> oh no, I accidentally tripped on you. <laughs> I feel like that's like another huge anime cliche. I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? I should have joined that club. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in the club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. My waifus, my actual anime waifus will hear you. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for... You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Uh... Not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. Uh... Sayori glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You are clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Uh, I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. Oh, bless you. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. 
And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Except for you, Senpai. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> I don't care, on the other hand. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Ah, oh, you're so mean. Uh, that's super mean. The main character is kind of a jerk sometimes. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Huh. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, uh, this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Uh, don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. It's like, maybe he's so mean to her, I guess because they're best friends, you know? So it's like, oh, he doesn't have to worry about, like, offending her or whatever. But sometimes he definitely does kind of come off as a jerk. Because Sayori's like, I love literature so much. And he's just like, I don't give a fuck about literature. <laughs> There's a bunch of hot babes in this club, and that's why I'm here. Damn it. That's why we're all here. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Ugh. Why is everyone in love with me? I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> My boobs actually did grow when you showed up. God dang it. It did when I bought it. Sigh. If you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you... What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> Anyways, you look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. I need the ladies to breathe. Siori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if they were going to change her sprite. Because I even kind of noticed that it wasn't uh, buttoned properly before. Phew. That's so much better. Siori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a... If I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't let you do things like this. Oh my god. Everyone is so in love with me. And he'd take care of me better than anyone else would. Anyways. So that's why I keep it unbuttoned. Also to let the ladies out. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Huh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well anyways, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. <laughs> You're hitting on me. Ah, oh, but I was joking that time. <laughs> but if you wanted to spend the night tonight, man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone, stop flirting. Huh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Weeby, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Seriori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Yay. Yeah, I'll just go in order. Ah. Uh, oh my goodness. This is so good, Weeby! Did you write this specifically so you could get with me? Huh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. That one sucked balls! Ugh. You're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. I wonder if Yuri is going to hate my poems. Like, wow, you really dumbed down this stuff. I want to put this on my wall. <laughs> the poem Weeby wrote just to get laid. Can I? 
Sayori. You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Oh well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Um... Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem... It's not just a poem. It's a weeby poem! <laughs> I could totally tell you're a fucking weeb just by reading this poem. And that's what makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah. Me neither. Uh, <laughs> why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Huh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyways, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes, sometimes, a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. <laughs> but also sometimes sad. But also sometimes happy. Sometimes, you know, okay, okay, I get it. <laughs> you can't decide. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Uh, it is? Maybe I'm getting better expre at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Weeby. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Oh wow, this one's really long. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Ugh. It's a secret place where I keep my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, in bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friends, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up, and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry, don't they want my bottle? Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle, but every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Oh, this is kind of dark. I think, at least. Let me reread some of this. And every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. Like, I guess maybe she's worried she can't help everyone? Is that what this is trying to... 
um, imply. That's kind of what I'm getting at least, because she's talking about like her happy thoughts in bottles and she would give them to her friends to make them feel better. But then at the end, it seems like she's saying that it doesn't say if the bottles break up here or not. But yeah, it kind of seems like she's trying to help everyone, but then it's like her own happy thoughts shatter. And I guess maybe she's worried that if she's not happy all the time, it'll affect those around her and she won't be able to help them. I'm pretty sure that's what this is going for. They'll probably say though. I do like Sayori a lot though. She is really sweet. Holy crap. Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. Yeah, that did seem a lot like Monica's poem than, I guess, her last one. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy, yeah. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Just kind of sad. Maybe because I'm so used to you being so cheerful. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was kind of about, I guess. Her feeling like, I guess she always has to be cheerful, you know? Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. I wonder if the poems are going to get progressively more dark <laughs> as the game goes on. Ah, oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Suri's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no, no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Aw, you're cute, Sayori. Okay, I'll do Natsuki. Sundari-chan. Hmm. <laughs> well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. Come to think of it, it's kind of... Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. You are totally just joining this club to get laid, aren't you? Uh, what? Uh, no. You think so? <laughs> I would never. Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Siori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how could someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ah, uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way, if it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Oh wow, all of these are long. I wonder, I guess it'll get longer as the game progresses too. Amy likes spiders. I probably was uh, being a little too harsh on her poem. There are actually some good poems. Like I said, I don't know anything about poetry. There really are uh, good poems out there though that use like simple language. There is ways to express ideas doing that. I guess because she was just dogging my poem so much when I like started reading it and it was like, the cow goes moo. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm about to freaking go off on you. But yeah, I probably was just being a little too hard on her. She is cute, even though she gives off that like, I don't like anybody vibe. You can tell she's actually really sweet, except maybe she's not actually really sweet because this game's supposed to get really messed up in the future. I don't know, I'll find out, I guess. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Ickly, wait, icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. <laughs> is this about Yuri? Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. 
It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Low-key, I kind of feel like this is about Yuri. And the fact that, like, I guess maybe the part, what if her friends start to like spiders too? Is that kind of referring to me? I'm probably, like, overanalyzing this. But you guys know that I like to do that. But that's kind of what I'm assuming, is she's talking, is she's maybe trying to talk about Yuri, like, and how Yuri has, like, a specific way that she likes to write poems, and what if that kind of rubs off on the others, or whatever else. It is kind of intense, though, if it is actually about her. <laughs> that's just what I'm kind of assuming, since she seemed to really be mad at Yuri from the last, the last video. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyways, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree with the subject. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is in... Oh yeah, <laughs> she is talking about Yuri. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk who's stupid and smells bad and her boobs totally grew right when you showed up. And I hate her and she's smelly. And do you know people like that? <laughs> her name rhymes with Shmurry. Of course, it's about everyone who thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about... It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. Yeah, I kind of did. I did feel bad for her after the argument with Yuri. I wish I would have asked Sayori to intervene. I felt kind of guilty. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Who should I show my poem to next? Yep, I'll go with Yuri. I bet she's gonna hate this poem. <laughs> I hope I get another day before things get kind of fucked up so I can see if uh, Yuri, if I do um, a poem basically based off of Natsuki, if Yuri's like, this sucks balls, I don't like you anymore. Let's see. Let's see what you've written for today. Um, hmm. <laughs> it's like you're not trying to get with me anymore. What is up with that? This is pretty good, Weeby. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently, differently everyone writes. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um... Well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon... It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering, the scuttering of a raccoon outside of my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The exciting beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. 
Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon is taking to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood, classic classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread and feed myself again. Okay, what's this about? How did I decide to buy a quality snack? I feel like the only thing I can really come up with for this poem is she's talking about me, like I'm the raccoon, and I've taken a liking to her, and I'm like following her, and she's kind of projecting her own emotions onto me, or like hoping that I guess I like her back since she seems to have a thing for uh, me or my character or whatever. I guess that makes me wonder if I'm um, depending on who you spend time with uh, based off of the poem you write, if that uh, affects the future poems too. I'm not really sure if that would be the case or not though. I guess um, I am kind of interested to know uh, the different cutscenes though for each day and how that works as well. Maybe after I beat the game, if you guys wanted me to, I could go back and do like, do like Sayori Natsuki's like first event or whatever. But uh, yeah, that is kind of interesting if that's the case because that's the only thing I can think of, but I feel like that would have to go with the idea that uh, the poems are based off of your choices from the last round too. So if that's the case, that's really cool. Um. I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. Am I the raccoon? It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't think, I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Huh? Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? Okay, so it's more, I guess, about uh, the conversation with them. So maybe maybe it doesn't change depending on uh, who you hang out with or something. About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest. Um... She... she did? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty mean, too. <laughs> yeah. She says you like spiders. <laughs> cat fight, cat fight. <laughs> she was also talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... she's right. I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please, don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Okay, now Monica. Senpai-chan. Hi again, Weeby. How's this writing? <laughs> or, actually, should I say Chisa? <laughs> Literally Chisa. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Haha, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Oh, you know, I guess Sayori was uh, writing about the situation too, about how I guess she wanted to help them in the fight, but she couldn't, and I guess she felt maybe guilty about that. Now that I think about it, I guess Monica's might be about the same thing. Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. You're totally just trying to get laid here, aren't you? <laughs> uh, nope, that, not me. I love literature, <laughs> probably. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Ah, oh, well. We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. 
It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, but in any case, Siori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy could enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyways, you want, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. <laughs> I'm kind of wonder if I will get a poem one day. I'm like, oh yeah, sure, let me see your poem. And it's like, death, destruction. I want to kill everyone, sacrifice their bodies. All right, let's take a look. Oh, well, hers is actually really uh, um, simple looking this time. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The voice, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like, paying, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Huh. Oh, balls. I can't tell if this is, um... Um, oh, weird. Uh, I'm not actually 100% sure if I read all of that one or not. <laughs> I might have to uh, <laughs> go back. I thought the game kind of froze for a second because it uh, didn't scroll the way through. I'm not really sure what hers is about. I wish I would have looked at it longer. Or, oh wait, history. Ah, ball sack. It's not going to show me her poem. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what hers is about because I thought it kind of might have glitched out for a second. I didn't feel like I was able to scroll. I'm happy it didn't though. Yeah, sorry, I guess I'm not going to really get to analyze that one that much. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. It's kind of like playing with my space on the paper. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with a reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyways. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. You're gonna do that every day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thanks, Monica. <laughs> you never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> Way to break the fourth wall. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, alright? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? <laughs> well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We don't need much more than a few decorations. Siori has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. A performing? Puh. Um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. 
But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come and recite poems too. Oh, okay, like a spoken word thing. Siori is putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> you know, like, this literally is so cute so far. Like, I almost honestly forget that it's supposed to be fucked up eventually. <laughs> Everything's been so cute and so adorable. Like, I'm starting to get into, like, this plot. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, we're gonna show everyone at the school festival what literature is all about. And then I'm gonna make out with Yuri and Sayori. <laughs> It's really interesting how they've done that. Like, I'm really kind of surprised that this aspect of the game has been really enjoyable so far. <laughs> Siori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Oh, <laughs> well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, <laughs> you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys. No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. Ah. Uh, but, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah. It's about expressing your feelings. Being intimate with yourself. Finding new horizons. And having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place. I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Ah. Um. Natsuki and Yuri rem remain silent. Siri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I gotta step up. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Oh, well, maybe, but... Um... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Eh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Um... Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. Sigh. I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> Do it for me, your new husband do. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, God. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> uh, it probably will be. <laughs> It'll probably be the death of all of us. <laughs> oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyways... Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. <laughs> no way. Monica? This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. You know, 
I'm starting to get kind of nervous. Everything's been so cute so far, but like, I know it has to get messed up eventually, so I'm like, any moment now. I also know this game is supposed to be fairly short, like five to six hours maybe, and I guess I played like close to an hour and a half yesterday, and then I'm probably gonna play around like, two hours worth or something today so i'm like it has to be getting close i don't know when it's gonna happen i'm nervous <laughs> like she's gonna start reading the poem and then like satan's gonna come from the floor like oh god nope now it's here <laughs> i don't know i'm scared like i said everything's been so cute so far i'm like kind of surprised i don't know i mean i guess i feel like it's kind of a slower um development towards the craziness that it then like Higurashi had I feel like I guess because Higurashi had like the small stories it didn't really take too terribly long to get there so maybe I guess it didn't really like establish that sort of like everything is great I love the literature club like Sayori and Yuri are my waifus and everything's wonderful I guess kind of Higurashi kind of happened a bit more quicker so it was wasn't as Surprising. Or I guess there wasn't as much like anticipation for it as like with this game. I'm like getting nervous <laughs> Like I don't know when we talk about the festival or any like doing anything I guess I'm like is, is this gonna be the moment like when are things gonna get fucked up? Am I just gonna wake up and come to school one morning and they've summoned Satan? The title of this poem is the way they fly Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem her clear confident voice fills the room more than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense, intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much! I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Oh, Yuri! Uva, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden! Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri Ancient... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Oh, it's a different one. Or maybe that was the one from yesterday. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if bewildered, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. <laughs> that was amazing, babe. <laughs> I love you. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Uh, looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay. I guess I'm next then. Suri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Suri. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Um... Try not to think of it like you were reciting to other people. Imagine yourself reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Siori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. 
If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Siori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Siori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Siori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Siori. <laughs> even Weavy liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? I wonder when the festival is. I feel like that's probably when things are going to get messed up. Okay, because that seems like it would be the climax of this game if it was normal. So maybe that's when everything gets, uh, when they go psycho or whatever. Now who's next? Natsuki? Huh. Don't make me go before Weeby. It's not like I can compare it to you guys, anyways. Might as well let Weeby lower everyone's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put everyone it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. All right then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because... Because you're presenting. <laughs> Anyways, the poem is called Jump. <laughs> it's actually called Shonen Jump. <laughs> Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. I like Natsuki, even though she can be kind of rude. I feel like it's just because she's, uh, she's insecure. Oh, uh, well. She is, like, total, like, I don't know, like, the perfect representation of Sundere, though. I guess that's probably what most Sundere's are like. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. <laughs> Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. <laughs> That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort to the club. It makes me really happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. 
As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday is the big day. Okay, Monday is the day I'm marking it in my calendar when we're all gonna fucking die, probably. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. <laughs> and impressing Monica Senpai. Then I'll have to do my best. I feel like Anime Boy is like, God dang it, why can't I write a poem for Monica? Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well... Uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Weeby. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Huh, another day safe. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Huh? Oh, she looks sad. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh. Um. Oh, damn, they're gonna make me choose? I don't know. Um. He's kind of a jerk, but... I, I don't know. I like both of them. God dang it, you're trying to make me choose between my waifu's game? How could you do this? Um. I don't know. I like Yuri because I feel like I can relate to her in a lot of ways, but Sayori is really cute. I don't know, I like both of them! It's like choosing between like Kaide and Kirigiri. Ah! <laughs> okay. I think I'm gonna choose. I'll choose Sayori. I'm choosing you. Sayori. You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Huh? But... She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. Hey, you're so silly, Weeby. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Siori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? <sighs> the conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? I'm gonna pull a school days. <laughs> okay, more um. Okay, sweet. So I do get another day. So I guess I'll try to hang out with um. Uh, Natsuki this time. Um, let's see. She likes cute stuff, right? Yay, bouncy. <laughs> what does her little face do? It looks cute. Um, let's see. Pout? <laughs> like her little face that she makes. <laughs> Did the others make a face like that, too? <laughs> Giggle. <laughs> she looks like... Meh. I don't even know how to describe that. <laughs> That's adorable. Ah, oh, dang it. Um, let's see. Doki Doki. <laughs> it's almost like it's the game we're playing. Puppy. Parfait? Um, kawaii. <laughs> I knew that was you, my little weeaboo waifu. Uh, fluffy. I think I've gotten enough of her still. Sugar. Heart. Ah, dang it. I still got a lot of Sayori. I think I got enough of Natsuki, though. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in, too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here 
if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Oh well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. And Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Uh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. I don't get it. I don't know Japanese though. Uh -huh. <laughs> the face. That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Huh? Uh, never mind. Let's just focus. Oh, wait. Was that like another fourth wall joke? <laughs> Maybe Monica does mean like squid or something in uh, Japanese, I guess. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyways. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyways? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. <laughs> She's like sad. I heard you made a poem for Natsuki this time. You're such a fucking player, Weeby. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Siori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, all right. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Siori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Siori recently. Since they've been practicing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Weeby, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. I kind of wish I would have done her poem now. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Weeby. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she never really... Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it, bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? Have you not noticed that everyone is in love with you in this club yet? Seriously? <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Weeby. Me? You did say you'd walk home with her, but now you're trying to hit on Natsuki? Like, like what the fuck? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. 
It's not any different now that it's... Now that it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, Weeby. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ugh. I said so much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyways? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions. You should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah. All right. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? Huh. I glance around the room. Oh, okay, Yuri. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no clue so I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to her, her own. Um I didn't mean to bother you or anything. I'm kinda confused. <laughs> Why am I hanging out with you? I thought I got Natsuki's cutscene this time. Relax, you didn't even do anything. But I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. Not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm so sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Eh? Yeah? Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that, I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Suri and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Maybe. The whole world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Ah! So you think that there might be something behind it after all. Ah. I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today, too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Oh, well, I guess that was the case. Sayori. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Oh, am I getting this because I chose Sayori over her earlier? Uh, I guess. You're dumping me even though my boobs grew quicker? I'm sorry, I just didn't want to make her sad. I know some of you guys were surprised that I said I liked Yuri the best in the last video. Thus far, it really is kind of between her and Sayori. Sayori is really cute. I, I don't know though, I like Natsuki too, because Natsuki is pretty funny. <laughs> I can't decide, they're all such waifus. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Huh. Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. 
Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes... A person's mysteries are untold, even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. That is... I think that... She would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. I see a literature club with a lot of hot babes and I join, so I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Um, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyways, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyways. Dot dot dot. Okay, everyone. After some time... Oh. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. I guess, yeah, I guess I'm not gonna get the Natsuki cutscene. I don't know. I, maybe I guess it's because it was more based off the choice I made between Sayori and Yuri. I guess it's probably what it is. Since I hung out with them both first, it was like I had to choose one, maybe? Oh, that kind of stinks, though. I wanted a Natsuki cutscene, too. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Who should I show my poem to first? Um... I guess I'll just be normal. Go down in a row. I'm not very creative. I want to know what's wrong with you, you bae. <sighs> this is your best one so far. Although it really seems like you're trying to hook up with Natsuki now. What the fuck? You said you were going to walk home with me. It's really, really nice, Weeby. Uh, thanks. <sighs> uh. Siori, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want to nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, Weeby. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. Oh, I, th I thought I did write it like Natsuki. Maybe I messed up. But in the end... Yeah. I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait. Of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have... A wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. And maybe I did accidentally choose her. I did get a lot of hers when I was trying to get Natsuki. Or maybe it's just because of the choice. I'm not actually sure, <laughs> honestly. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when I'm thinking about you. It's <laughs> so smooth. Sayori. <laughs> no! <laughs> Weeby. I, I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. <laughs> We're just gonna make out in front of everyone. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori! I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori. I've probably never said this before, but, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me, what will cheer you up? Siori shakes her hand, head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. I it's nothing, Weeby. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> Is she crying because she's happy or sad? I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? Is that why she was sad that I liked her? I don't know. That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Oh, why? No. 
Sayori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? Why are you so sad? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Oh, that made me sad. I don't understand. Why did I make her sad? I thought she'd be happy. That I liked her. Oh, I like her. She's really cute. It seemed like most of you guys liked her the best in the comments section, which is why I kind of wanted to give her more of a chance, too. Although I really do like Yuri, too. Mostly because of what she said about, I guess, liking um, darker characters or whatever. I was like, oh, I can relate to that. But oh, that was sweet. I feel sad now. Poor Sayori. Um, finally. Huh? This one. It's good. I was wondering how long it would take you. All right. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Don't listen to what anyone else says. Especially Yuri. Just keep writing poems like this. That's all you need. Uh, are you sure that's not just what you want? Excuse me? You're talking to a pro, you know. Don't you think you should trust my opinion the most? I guess that depends. Aren't you biased towards poems that are more simple and cute? Biased? Of course not. My opinion just happens to be the best. Uh, there's one thing I still can't tell. Is Natsuki actually self-aware of her spoiled behavior? At this rate, I don't know if I'll ever figure it out. Fair enough. I'm glad you like my poem, after all. <laughs> I knew you'd finally understand. Just keep showing me your poems and you'll be a pro before you know it. Anyways, here's the one I wrote. Oh, I didn't even get to see Sayori's poem. Why is she sad? <laughs> oh, I don't want her to be sad. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way, in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see your sh and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. I mean, it definitely seems like it's about opening up to someone, you know, and letting them learn to love themselves through you loving them and all that. But I don't really know how that correlates with the story unless it's about me, I guess. <laughs> Maybe I'm just way too much of a narcissist thinking every single poem's about me. Yeah. Although everyone is in love with me. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. I agree with that. So you decided to write about the beach first and then came up with a message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Uh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic when trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Oh, well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Who should I show my poem to next? Do you, Yuri? Uh, uh, decided to try something different. Wow, this poem fucking sucks. <laughs> You're getting farther and farther from my light every day, Weeby. I guess so. Is that good or bad? Well, neither. I have my preferences. But it would be unfair for me to call something good or bad based on that. I think it sucks, basically. I always believe, as always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Huh? Why me? 
Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Uh. Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Huh? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being disliked. Yuri. What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Uh, okay. Here. Beach, a marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds and endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. Ah, why does it do that sometimes? Why can't I scroll down? It did this with Monica's poem too. I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently look at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet, we still build sandcastles. I think that's what the bottom part says. God dang it. I want to read the rest of it. Ah. Ah. Can't get the full experience of the game without reading these things. God dang it, game. Oh, wait. There it goes. I guess it was just like locked or something. Okay, whatever. Sorry, guys. It might be like a weird transition. I don't know if I'm going to just transition it or what. But sometimes it's like... This bar gets, like, frozen or something while I'm playing. I don't know if it's because I'm recording at the same time or what, but it's pretty weird. Anyways, it'll let me read it now, so that's good. Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build a sand... Yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where the toes... Where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back. And I abandon my peace to erode at the to erode at the shore, drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Okay. I like this poem. It's really pretty. I'm not 100% sure what it means, but it's pretty. <laughs> Good job. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about it. She did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyways, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. I thought uh, Natsuki said it was Yuri's idea. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But... Well, I suppose it's not so. Well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Okay, Monica. Hi, Weeby. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well. Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. Let Monica take, I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Uh, I like it, Weeby. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. I can't believe you're trying to bang every single member of this club. It's so obvious through your poems. Who do you think you're trying to trick? <laughs> oh, jeez. No, no. It kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. Okay, so it was based off of Natsuki. I wasn't really sure since I was getting like a cutscene with Sayori. It probably had to do, I guess, with the Sayori Yuri choice or whatever since I hung out with both of them. And she's a good writer, too. So, that take, so take that as a compliment. Ah, uh, if you say so. Yep. By any chance, have you read anything by Shel Silverstein? 
Huh? Maybe a long time ago. He's famous for telling all kinds of stories in just a few simple words. His poems can be funny, endearing, or even sad. And sometimes they're only a few lines ago. Well, a few lines long. They might even feel like they're written for kids, but if you think about them, they can express views of the world that would apply to anybody. I see. So you're saying that Natsuki is kind of like that? Sort of. Maybe she's not an expert, but you probably won't find much filler in her poems. They might be easy to write, but they're super challenging to get the meaning through. So I can see why it would be your kind of poem to explore. Anyways, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. A lady who knows everything. Okay, it's letting me scroll. Good. The lady who knows everything. The old tell... An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. She seem, does seem to make use of space a lot. Lost adrift, the sky victim of the current... Uh, currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope. Knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away... The legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb of a forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. I have no idea what this means. <laughs> or how it, like, relates. It doesn't really seem like they relate as much to the story. At least, uh, this round. I guess the ocean thing, they just kind of chose to write themselves. I don't know what this means. The lady who knows everything. I'm not really sure. I feel like that's probably what... Uh, Baka-san's gonna say too. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the same answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyways, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much effort into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a sec. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Oh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. <laughs> oh god, I feel it, Yuri. <laughs> They really do build up the anticipation pretty well with this game, because it's like you know you go into it knowing that something's wrong, or something bad's gonna happen since you get all those warnings when it starts. But it just makes everything so happy. I don't know, I'm scared. 
Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. <sighs> oh, you just fucking jinxed us, Yuri. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Huh. It seems you're right. Ah, oh, sigh. Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyways? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Uh, seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Whew. What? Cu that, curious ex that curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyways, we need to figure out the rest of- uh, just <laughs> I'm just gonna totally ignore that. Anyways, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. Just totally cut me off there. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. Though we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? A challenge accepted. As for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Suri will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Um, uh... <laughs> uh... Uh, guys? Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? Oh... I'm useless. No, no, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know? <laughs> oh my god, I knew she was gonna huff and puff about that. Now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow up as a person. So, Yuri, you have... Beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere! Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyways, that just leaves you, Weeby. The one who is truly... Uh, oh, <laughs> I, thought she, I thought she said that for a second. I was like, damn, you're really being honest here, aren't you? The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, senpai Monica. Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? <laughs> They're all already, like, completely obsessed with me. Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Oh well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica is going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyways. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall Natsuki... You mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Weeby may not like to be around you if you only make him out to be a nuisa a nuisance. <laughs> Plus he's my husband, oh damn it. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyways? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Weeby to stare at your boob some more. What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? And just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Weeby to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend time with, with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said, 
I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Weeby, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Oh man, I gotta decide. Ah. Of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh god dang it. Um, Natsuki, Yuri, Monika, Sayori. Um, Balsack, I have no idea. I think I'm gonna go with Sayori. I don't know, I, I feel bad. I wanna know what's wrong with her. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I'd prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors and... But Monika said... Monika said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? <laughs> no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Okay, <laughs> I can't choose her. Okay, ball sack. Um, okay, well, if that's the case, then I guess I'll hang out with Natsuki. Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use two people. Don't worry. Baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Huh? Just a minute ago, you were saying that... And that's because... <laughs> doki doki. Never mind, okay. Well, anyways, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. Ah, uh, that's depressing. Uh, <laughs> poor Yuri, she's like, Weeby, you betrayed me. You said I was the best girl, and now you're hanging out with others. I can't help that all these babes want me, Yuri. I gotta fly free, fly free. Uh, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Even though Yuri is being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's about it. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Everything except the performance is gonna be awesome. I don't think that really counts. <laughs> what about you, Weeby? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. <laughs> Suck it, bitch. I got the boy. Uh, uh. Natsuki starts pouting, too. It's not. I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. <laughs> I mean, although we're totally gonna make out once he comes over. And I'm totally gonna take pictures and text them to you. Well, it might be just that. Huh? I think that Yuri might just be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help. That doesn't mean... Uh, Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look. Natsuki goes over and puts her hands down on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here. And... And you're going to help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too. But you're gonna make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important to the way that people feel during the performance. So... You need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Natsuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. Ah, uh, you didn't really mean that, did you? Um, <laughs> of course I didn't. <laughs> she said that. Oh, she really is saying something like that. <laughs> Not really, your poems suck. Yuri isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Natsuki's words. Natsuki of all people to be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Ah, that's cute. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a great event. Yeah. Yeah! I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got to do any reading today, so... Fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Am I gonna walk home with somebody else? Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Um, where are you going? Huh? Oh, we still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally would have gotten home and realized you didn't even have a way to contact me. <laughs> Gonna get my digits now. Oh yeah, that's true. I, I have no idea how that slipped my mind. 
Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You'd better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? <laughs> because I love you, Baka. Humph. Natsuki gives me her number. Okay. I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait. You're coming to my house? Oh, well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping out, I'd be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Hey, yeah, how do you think I feel? I can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyways, I just need to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. All right, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really gonna show you why I love baking so much. So you'd better look forward to it. Oh. Didn't you just say you were going to give me the dirty work? Oh well, I was, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like, it's not like I could act like in front of everyone that I was looking forward to this or something. Oh wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before, it's not because I'm in love with you. That's all it is, so. All right, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyways, I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday. Ah. Ah. Never mind. I can't believe this. Natsuka is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. Oh, God damn. You are such a horn dog, anime pro tag. <laughs> but who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was, uh, <laughs> looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that's... Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. <laughs> Besides, I like my... Uh, I thought I was gonna say, <laughs> besides, I like Monica anyways. You don't get a choice, person playing this game. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. Okay, I think this is probably a good place to save. I've been playing for quite a while. Thanks guys once again for um, being so supportive of this Let's Play. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit nerve wracking to uh, try something different. So it's always nice to get uh, good feedback and for you guys to see that you are interested in me trying other things outside of Danganronpa and just like Let's Play stuff in general. Cause I don't know, I had so much fun with the V3 playthrough and really so far with this one too that it is something I would like to kind of do on my channel a good bit alongside like the usual analysis content. Yeah, so far I'm really enjoying this. I'm happy that you guys are enjoying this. I'll definitely finish this out. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like or subscribe if you did enjoy, and I will see you guys real soon. Subscribe to Weeby News for more hope-filled videos.